Is he sleeping? Can you haul him like this so they can see him? Even he's knocked out. Uh oh. We just messed up your sleep. A lot of light, eh? You see, what you see here is a miracle. Not just because we say it so, but even the doctors say it so. Tell us. Praise the Lord. Um, I give God thanks for what He did for my son. Two months ago, my son was sick. We took him to do a circumcise, and it's four hours later, when we come back home, I was holding him, and he was like, he was pale, and he was he was not responding, and he was not eating. So I told my husband, let's contact Apostle Society, and we when we contacted him, and he was he rebuked the spirit of death, and he he was giving me instructions. He was saying that grab a bottle of water, and he put over the water over the phone, and he told me to put the water in his neck and also in his belly, and. And he, he told me to put the water in his forehead, and I actually did. And after that, we take him back to the to the doctor. When we take them back, and he the doctor was so shocked what happened to him because he was pale. Because nobody goes to the doctor to get circumcised, and two hours later, your son is not responding. Your son looked dead, and they quickly put him in an oxygen, and they quickly called the ambulance. So when we went to the um, hospital. When we went to the children's hospital, when we went to the children's hospital, and they called all the specialists to come in because they never seen something like that to see a 17 day old baby just like basically they didn't want to say the word death. He was almost die. And they quickly, like, they call the specialist and they they check on him and they say, oh, my God, they were trying to talk to us, say that, oh, we, we don't know what's going to happen. They didn't want to tell us that, oh, your son not going to live. They did not want to say that because they're doctors. They say, oh, we, we're hoping for a miracle. And my head pastor keep on calling us. I was excited. He keep on calling us and he keep on saying everything will be all, all right. He's not going to die. He shall live. And... <laughs> And he, he keep on encouraging us that he's not gonna die. When the doctor, they keep on coming back to Brandon. Brandon's like, what, what is going on with my son? They can't find out what's going on with him. They cannot know nothing. They, um, every time they talk to us, they don't know what's going on with him. And basically, they wanna, they wanna tell us that he's gonna die without telling us. Because they, they would come to us, they would be like, oh my God, your son, we don't know what's going on with him. We can't do nothing right now. We're going to try to do this. We're going to try to do this test, that test. Every test is done. My head pastor say every test is done, they're going to come out negative. It's not, it's not going to be positive. It's going to be negative. And I listened to him and they put, he was in the ICU. So he, <laughs> he was in the ICU and he was, then, yeah. I'm going to help my wife a little bit. She's going to continue. So basically, um, we were in the trauma room. There was doctors everywhere, and then they put us in. Um, they put him up on the fifth floor of the children's hospital. And she didn't tell you they drove 120 miles an hour with her in there. And she told them to slow down. And they they said we're trying to go save your son. Um, and they put us on the fifth floor, and we hadn't slept, and you know. And I remember that we were looking out at the city of Minneapolis, and I was looking out the window. And. Uh, distract my mind I started doing ministry stuff getting on the phone calling people I, I just want to take my mind off of it for a minute and uh, a doctor came out one of the, the ER surgeons he's like you know I said well how's my son and he in a very stone cold voice he's like well I was like well you know we're believing to get out here this week you know he's like your son will be here weeks or months minimum so don't even think about that and I looked him in the eye and I don't know where the boldness came from but I said I don't want to disrespect you I thank you for taking care of my son, but I believe that my God and Jesus will heal him, and it will be sooner than that. And on day two, um, my wife, you know, she just had a baby who was only 17 days old. He's just turned four months uh, this week. Um, and day two, uh, they don't let one of us stay in the room. Uh, we were staying in the Ronald McDonald house there because we had our four-year-old daughter, Esther Grace, with us, and she couldn't stay in there. They wouldn't let her be up there because there were too many sick kids in the PICU. Um, and so I was getting ready to leave and another head doctor that night about one in the morning he says well I need you to sign this paper as the dad and I said well what is this for he said well we might have to do a blood transfusion 
And I didn't want to make any rational decisions, and I knew that didn't sound good. I said, look, I said, doctor, out of respect, I'm going to go lay down and, and, and rest and pray. My wife will be here till the nurse comes. At, and then if you need me, you can buzz me. I'm two floors down. I'll come up immediately, and we can talk and make a decision about my son before I do anything rationally. Um, but I, so at five, I couldn't sleep. I got my daughter to sleep. I couldn't go to bed, and I was tossing and turning. And uh, long story short, my wife was about to go lose her mind because we were worried about our son. Apostle had a vision. He was praying for my son, and he texted. He saw my son talking. And babies don't talk. When he saw his son talking, he said, he's going to be all right. That was day two, amen. And they started getting better and better. And they came around, and on the fifth day, which is, they said, he, they nicknamed him the miracle baby. And they released him on the fifth day down to the, down to the third floor with just a feeding tube and took, took him off life support. And the apostle prophesied he'd be out of there in seven days. Amen. Give God praise. And on the seventh day, as we go back, the doctor came and says, your son can go home now and released us to go home on the seventh day, which is perfection in the Bible, the same thing the man of God prophesied and prayed, and our son's alive and well and is going to serve the Lord. Amen. So if he can do it for my son, he can do it for you. Amen. Hallelujah. What's going on here? That's a miracle, baby. Clap hands for Jesus. Hallelujah.